one of the better, best defenses in the league going up against yeah. what will be one of the more high octane, best attacking uh, teams in the league. NWSL championship just days away. Number one shield winners, Orlando Pride against Washington Spirit. We are previewing every single angle of this match you could want for. So get set, get your popcorn. Let's dive in. We decided to do tactical positional breakdowns for our previews because there's three of us. We're each taking a different part of the pitch. So I'm going to talk about Washington Spirit's attack against Orlando Pride's defense because that's how they're going to match up on the pitch. Um, Orlando Pride defensively, I'm a defender, so I'm starting defense. Orlando Pride defense this year has been absolutely uh, electric. The records that goalkeeper Anna Morehouse has continued to break with her clean sheets and her shot stopping ability, but so much of it starts ahead of her. So it's Carrie Bello, um, Kylie Strom, Emily Sams, and Corey Dyke in the back line with midfielders Haley McCutcheon and Angelina ahead of them. So those are the six I'm going to look at defensively, um, even though McCutcheon and Angelina are technically midfielders, but they do so much work behind them. And, and when Orlando defends throughout this season, specifically the, the last several games that have allowed them to make it all the way to the NWSL championship, it's because the Pride have five or six players behind the ball Always. It's rest defense. It is defensive organization that is so keyed in with the vocal communication. Emily Sam's doing a lot of the work to organize and make sure people are in right positions, putting good pressure cover on the ball. Um, now, heading into this game for Orlando against Washington, they don't have to worry about someone like Temwa Shawinga. So it's a little bit of a different game plan than the semifinal against Kansas City because they don't have to be overly aware of just one individual player. Honestly, it might be harder because Orlando has to keep an eye on Rodman, Kwasi, Hatch, Santos, all of the different threats that are coming forward. But on the ball, Emily Sams has to be able to play um, uh, line breaking balls and provide distribution and, and be able to switch the point of attack, be so composed on the ball because you know, you know that Washington's front line is going to press them. Hatch is so quick. She is on the front foot on the counter press. So with the ball and distribution, Sam's has to be able to keep it, keep it moving. It also has to be body on the line. We saw that for Washington, or excuse me, for Orlando defensively over the last couple of games, doing everything to stop a shot, prevent it even from getting to Anna Morehouse in goal. And that's what the Orlando defense is going to do. And against a Washington attack with Trinity Rodman, Ashley Hatch, Rose Kawasi, this is such a dynamic trio. In their semifinal game against Gotham, the second half changed because Trinity Rodman switched from the right side of the field to the left side to have a better matchup. I want this Washington front three of Rodman, Hatch, and Kuwasi to be interchanging in the opening 10 minutes of this game, right? Get, get 10 minutes under their belt to go against the back line that they're matched up against. Then if it's not working, switch. Have a lot of interchange. Use the entire width of the front line, which Washington likes to do, right? Kuwasi can stretch them. Rodman likes to get the ball in those wide flanks. Spread out Orlando's back line because that'll open up little tiny pockets for Lacey Santos to make deep runs from the midfield into the attacking end. And those gaps have to be opened by stretching it wide. Ashley Hatch has to have an energized game where her counter press is kickstarting the, the ball winning abilities for Washington, pressuring Sams and Strom in the back line and, and steering the press for Washington to go where they want to go. Um, but Washington has to be able to adjust on the fly. And it starts with these front three using the first 10 minutes to read the game, understand what Orlando is giving them spacing wise, but trust in Rodman, Hatch, Kuwasi to find the spaces themselves to go at the back lines to find those gaps in Orlando's back line. I am so excited for this matchup because I think both lines, Orlando defensively and Washington offensively, have grown since their last meeting on October 6th. Um, Sandra, when you think about Orlando defense, Washington attack, am I, am I missing anything huge here? Any big gaps in my analysis and breakdown? I, I love listening to your to your breakdowns, especially on the defensive side of things, because it, it makes me throw it back to the early days of A3 when we were always like, we love defenders, so let's start with defense and talk about defenders. But I also love that you're including a bit of of some of, of the defensive midi mindsets for, for Orlando. I, I think it's going to be 
be tough. And I think it's important to note as we listen to you and, and eventually we're going to toss it to Darian here about these sort of attacking breakdowns that it's it's going to, to look and feel a, a bit different. So I, I'm here for the what's arguably one of the better best defenses in the league going up against yeah. what will be one of the more high octane best attacking uh, teams in the league. Darren, what about you? What stands out to you about Orlando defense, Washington offense? Anything I missed? We can't hear you, bud. I want to hear Sorry, you. Thank you. <laughs> they, I don't think Orlando's had the full taste of Kawasi and no. really what she can do because we've seen her look more and more comfortable with the spirit. I think get into actual game fitness with the spirit. Um, she's a feisty player. She's not afraid to go 1v1. She has the boldness to try some very, very s specific moves that's not just based around speed and how she can get around you. She was cooking Jess Carter last week, one of the best defenders in the world, cooking her. So I, I'm anxious to see how Corey Dyke handles her, Emily Sams, if Rodman and her end up switching sides. How does Carrie Abello have to stay pinned back a lot more? I think it's actually going to have to switch up Orlando's game plan a bit because Rodman and Kawasi, those are two huge threats. Orlando likes to send one of their outside backs really high, whether it's Dyke or it's Abello, mostly Abello. But it's going to make them have to adapt in that way. But I like it. This is the matchup we, we're dying to see. We got it in Kansas City. Screamer of five goals in a match. Uh, I, I expect to see it in this match because I think – both teams are going to play smart to stick to their style of play, especially in the attack. Well, Washington, they like to switch up their attack quicker than a defense will change up. Um, but I think I like we'll see, I yeah, like Orlando that. have to decide. I'm interested to see when we see them decide to sit back a little bit more and need more of a flat four to try to handle Kawasi and Rodman. And, and to try to just keep them in front of them because Washington attack switches so much as a defender, you have to just drop and give them a little bit more space. You can at least see the interchange coming and communicate on it. And I think a lot of the initial press is going to have to come from McCutcheon and Angelina because of the way Hatch has been playing recently, dropping yeah. off the back line a little bit deeper into the midfield. She has to be picked up by McCutcheon and Angelina because if Hatch has too much time, it's not going to work, especially if Rodman switches and goes to the left she last week when that switch happened she liked to find hatch a lot in yeah. that little pocket and then cut in herself with a little interchange it's hard hard to defend against mccutcheon and angelina are gonna have it sounds so weird saying mccutcheon Haley and angelina are gonna have their hands full with hatch dropping into that 10 spot because they do play a little bit more flat you mm -hmm. have to be so in tune with your other midfielder to block out those passes. And I mean, Haley can cover a lot of freaking ground. We've seen that. Yeah. The girl doesn't get tired. She's literally gets the best I've played with her for, I played with and against her for like six years. She's the first on every single fitness test. That wow. doesn't matter though when you don't have the ball. And with Hatch, with Jonah Haraldez making her more of a false nine where she's she's more of a 10. She's not really stretching the line. She's laying the ball off. She's orchestrating play. She's tying the lines together. There has to be so much organization. And I think with last week, we saw Emily Sams on the goal that Dabinia scored. She was worried about Temwa Shawinga. Yes. She wasn't looking yes. over her shoulder at Dabinia. Yeah. Her last look was to the center spot to see where Shawinga was and Dabinia was wide open. I yeah. think Hatch is going to cause a similar issue, similar to what we saw last week. But I, I'm just looking to see how they adapt. Both of these coaches like to push and pull, and mm -hmm. it's more of a chess match between these two. So it's going to be fun to see. This, I think this is happens. actually where the game will be the most interesting. It, with Orlando defense, Washington offense? Yes. Yeah. It, I imagine also as the game unfolds in the first 45 minutes, we could see a a significant tactical changes in the second half, depending on how it happens, because the coaches will have time at halftime to kind of break down those individual battles and matchups that we see. Or we're um, going to see keepers go down four times in the first half and have 20 <laughs> minutes of at a time. So oh, we'll, we'll see. Don't, coaches don't, are loving that this that. year. Jesus. Um, okay, Z, flip the script on us. Talk about Orlando's attack and Washington's defense. So Washington's defense, I think, is much stronger than we saw most of the season, I'll say 80% of the season. Kruger's back. Nikki Owens on fire. They have Esme Morgan and Gabby Carl. 
the weak point I can see being for the spirit is Esme Morgan because she has not gone against Barbara Banda yet. She has not gone against Amarta yet and how they combine against each other. That is a lot to handle. That is a lot of very, very technical players, very quick transitions, a lot of power. It's it's intimidating to play against, especially when you look at Terry McKeown, who's had two penal caused two penalties against them, ultimately lost them the games because of the penalties and how quick Banda is and how she can bait you with her movement to try to collapse last minute and she's already touched the ball away. Uh, so I think they're going to be very weary of how they try to go against Barbara Banda, just moving their feet, not trying to body against her, not trying to tackle her anywhere near and around the 18. I like that Casey Kruger's back. I think she brings so much leadership to that back line. Gabby Carl's been very solid for them. Then you look at Orlando's front line. You have Ali Watt, who's in the best form I think I've ever seen her play in. Uh, looking so dynamic, going 1v1, being an assister, not taking shots that I think earlier in the season we would have seen her take these very low percentage goal scoring shots. She's looking to cut it back and assist, and it's happening. Marta, I mean, I don't need to say anything. Barbara Banda, Lisa's MVP for the year. Adriana, who has a great track record against the Spirit. It's four players who interchange so much that it's really difficult to keep track of. How are you staying organized? How are you not causing a foul? Um, are you moving your feet quick enough? I like this battle. I think it's going to ask a lot of Spirit's backline. I think Casey Kruger will be pinned a lot more, worrying about where Banda is going because we see her with the U.S. national team have to cover a lot of ground making up for everybody else. I think she's going to shoulder a lot of that responsibility. Um but I don't know. I We may see another penalty in this match because yeah. I don't think that this back line can handle Banda and what she offers. I mean, two penalties the first two times they met, right? One in each of the matchups. I know. I, I'm nervous for turnovers for Washington's back line and getting yeah. pressured on by Banda, right, who who just runs at you and then Marta able to pick off the pass. If I'm Mickey Owen and Morgan, I am not playing around. I just am kick it. One just pick it, just getting <laughs> it away out of there, <laughs> getting it the same as Kingsbury, too. Like, because she had a questionable game with her feet in the semifinal, yeah, she held on too long. Well, we've seen Morgan. This is we've seen Morgan, I think, still having to adapt to the NWSL and how fast players can close you down. I mean, I, I for me, the NWSL forwards, the first thing you're taught is prey on mistakes, prey on mistakes that center backs are going to make because it's bound to happen. Look at the pass that's moving a little slow look at the touch that goes a little too far away or that has some awkward backspin where it's not going to go clean off of their foot banda does that time seven yeah. esme morgan has not felt that yet and marta so, and marta and Mar like mm -hmm. yeah it just goes and goes this is why i think it's going to be high scoring because i assume orlando's going to score yeah i do think spirit have a strong attack it's just going to be boom 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 golazo golazo I hope so. Possibly a penalty, oh, very likely. Let, let's see who comes out on top in the oh, 90 goodness. minutes. Sandra, do you think it's going to be high scoring? I'm almost kind of nervous now where I'm just like, we're, we're are we overhyping <laughs> it? Are we guessing it up? Like, <laughs> are we about to get like the narrowest of narrow score lines? But I don't I don't think so. Both I, of I these do, coaches play bold. They and this is absolutely the time in which they're yeah. gonna do it. I think we'll see adjustments quicker than maybe even we saw in the quarter or in, in the semis. Uh, and I do, I, I think if we're not getting, you know, at least five goals, we're getting something, you know, maybe like a two, two, maybe they, maybe they need extra time to handle this one because maybe, maybe part of that first half is a little cagey. And I think great arguments on, on, on both sides, but I think when you really lay down all the all the cards and 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 the personnel that's going to be available in these two matches, I think on paper you still give the advantage a little bit to Orlando Pride. Ooh, I like it. At the end of the show, we're going to give full predictions. If you're with us live on YouTube, there's a poll: who is going to win the NWSL Championship, Orlando Pride or Washington Spirit? Vote because we are taking that into account as well.